modern world of iPads, satellites, and other digital devices, there's a different world. A place where vinyl records, mini fun, and cassette tapes are resurrected for the listening pleasure of a generation born long before Facebook, selfies, and Wi-Fi. A place where a loyal group of men and a few women practice a traditional radio format that came before boy bands and Nicki Minaj. A time when music was an art form and radio was an excuse to bring families together. WFCS 1077 FM is a student-run radio program at Central Connecticut State University. The station, which originated in the 1940s, started as a small community radio station and today, community volunteers who helped build the station are still here playing the same formats and genres of music they did back then. This is a look behind the scenes of a community college radio station. This is their story, the story of the people keeping traditional radio alive. One oh seven point seven. WFCS coming to you from the campus of Central Connecticut State University. My name is Steve Strini, and this is our, I guess you would call it our biannual Moody Blues Special. It's one of my favorite uh, artists, favorite groups, and we're going to be doing three hours of them. A vinyl presentation, okay? No, uh, no iPods, no CDs, none of that uh, imitation stuff. This is going to be the real thing, putting the... A vinyl record on a turntable and letting that needle slide around at 33 and the third RPMs. I'm Melissa Evans. I go by Melissa. I've always had a one name and I've been here since 1984. I try to be diverse with the music I play and try to get it into little half hour sets of maybe half hour of acoustic, half hour of jazzy rock, half hour of progressive rock, just so that it doesn't sound too schizophrenic. <laughs> but last week, I went from Prince to a black metal band from Sweden called Dissection in my show, so you can't get any broader than that. Now, I'm going to ask all you guys, all you guys have a story, I bet. Right? Yeah. I got stories. Yeah. I got nothing. You got nothing? Yeah. Introduce yourselves. Tony, go start. Start. I am Tony Ajiri from the class of 73. There you go. And Paul Kozak, 73 as well. Yeah. And what, last but not least, Richard Wisniak, class of 73, 73. five year plan. Five year plan. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Warner, mm -hmm. come on, Mr. Warner. Yeah. Yeah. I've had the call letters. Yeah. The you world's got... finest college station. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. yeah. WFCS, New Britain, Connecticut. All right. Thank you. All right. Very good, Rob. And okay. I'm well, class of class I'm of what? Class of '77. Okay. Oh, he's a youngster. Oh, we got to get who like that young youngster in here. Right well, my name is Robert Warner, and in the 1970s, specifically '74 to '77, I was on on the air in WFCS. We all had air names. I was Crazy Kong, oh and a buddy of mine was the Space Cowboy. Uh, <laughs> another, we all had names. And I was music director of the radio station. And we had 6,000 of these record albums. But it was frustrating finding an album, even though they were supposed to be in order. Dinah Ross and the Supremes. Some people put that under R. Some people put it under S, and some people put it under pop, and other people put it under R and B. Couldn't find it. So I devised a system of, if I grab one here, I created, uh, put stickers on every single one of our albums. This number 50260 was assigned by a computer that they had um, at, uh, we had a whole, a whole building for computer and um, and it was all alphabetic order except for the classical music and this this is another one okay this is number 49440 I lived in Robert C Vance Hall sixth floor now a number of people don't know that but what happened was it was a Sunday morning I went to walk by the uh, telephone booth, I could not. The telephone was removed. 
somebody had stolen the pay phone right out of the wall. Wow. Whoever decided to steal the phone, uh, pay phone, right. knocked the radio station off the air, which oh. was against FCC regulations, mm -hmm. to, and uh, they investigated. I don't think they ever figured out where the, the phone yeah, the uh, machine phone went, yeah. or yeah. Uh, they never persecuted uh, or and, prosecuted. Right. Uh, we had a teletype machine, which, for those people who wouldn't know what those are, mm -hmm. that's how we got our news. Uh, we would get teletype, and there would be actual uh, typed um, text stories about the news of the day, and we'd grab it and read it, and that's how the term grab and read came about, but again, anybody over, <coughs> anybody <laughs> under 40 would not, not understand what that is. Maybe yeah. under 20, I don't know. Yeah. Um, so, uh, we were in the bathroom, that's where the teletype machine was, and also that's where I had to do the newscast, in the bathroom, uh, while, <laughs> that's not a juicy story, but it's funny in so many, many ways, but it, it was somewhat, it was yeah, typical it of what we had to do to get, to get the job done, we went to any lengths possible. Yeah. Now, uh, now, was that transgender? <laughs> oh, wow. Hi, my name's Tony Ajiri, and I did a show here at Central back in the early 70s. Uh, I used the name Tony Reynolds at that time, and um, the music I played was basically top 40 at that time. I do have uh, a story of the first show I did here at Central, which was interesting. And what year was that about? Uh, what year was it? 1420. 19, <laughs> 1969, 70? Yeah, oh, very good. Anyway, so so I want to join the radio uh, station here, radio club. Mm -hmm. So I walked down here, and <clears throat> Dave Landry is the uh, GM at that oh, time. Yeah, Dave. Mm -hmm. So I come in here and tell him, uh, Dave, I'd like to join the station and everything. Yeah. And he said, okay, uh, <laughs> do you know how to run everything? I said, well, not really. So, so he put him on the air. He's on the air, so so he shows me. This is how you uh, work the turntable, one and two. This is how you work the mic. Of course, there's no CD player or anything like that. But you had else. two turntables. So he shows me, <laughs> and so I, I put one record on, and you know, I, I talk at the end of the record, and then right after that, I turn around and there's nobody in the station. <laughs> He's, gone. <laughs> He's gone. He's <laughs> gone. Here's the keys. You drive. <laughs> right. Right. Uh, so he did say, you know, I'm on the air, you'll, you'll be on the air for another two hours, but I thought he'd stick around. Yeah. So there I am, all alone, yeah. Yikes. And, and praying that everything keeps working and yeah. I don't have any problems with the turntable or, or the yeah. mic. But uh, everything went well, thank you. Radio by the seat of your pants. Yeah, it was fun, yes. right? It was, it was fun. fun. That's a great story. I just, yeah. Paul Grange, if you're listening, I'll be very careful with this. Uh, I was um, on the air at the time, and I was doing the board, and we have the newsroom, as you mentioned, uh, Dick, in the bathroom. And inside there, of course, you had, all you had was a microphone and a little box on the wall with a red light. So when the red light went on, it means you go on. So that day, the light was blown out. It wasn't going to go on no matter what I did. So I turned on, we had a... a coming up to the end of the record, and then finally we had a little news stinger, mm -hmm. and uh, we, I go ahead and flick on the mic, and if you're in the news when you hear the stinger, you know you're gonna go live. Sure. Well, the light was blown out, so uh, all of a sudden I didn't hear anything, and I hear, hi, 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 hello, and then, you know, he got a little nervous, and, I, and Paul, if you're listening, this is, this is not anything against you. If you got a little nervous, I would've been nervous the same way, and he goes, what the F is going on? <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> and that went over the air. I'm Kristen Drakenberg. My DJ name when I'm on the air is Miss Kristen because I like to teach you all there is to know about rock and roll and, you know, older music and all the good stuff. So the way I started at the station, um, my dad was a DJ here 30-something years ago back in... Uh, I think he started in 79, fall of 79. And uh, Steve Strini actually trained my dad to be on the air. And uh, he was a DJ late at night. He had his own Southern rock show. And uh, he used to tell me about it when I was a kid. And he was like, oh, you know, we have to go visit Bill Walsh. He's still on the air. So we came in one day, we visited Bill while he was doing his show. And Steve was here and Steve let me go on the air. and. I was like, oh my God, this is amazing. Where do you 
think the future of radio is going, if it even has a future? Community radio stations, college radio stations, we're still here, but do you think we can say that in the next five years? I think so. I, I hope so. Um, I can't really say too well, um, but I would like to think that it does stay around because there's something about it that's so important. It's an art form, uh, an art form like no other, um, because you're not a musician, but you still get to express all of that as if you were a musician. And to have it as an outlet to create a show, it's, it is a piece of artwork. You're putting together these songs that, that flow and they change your emotions. And to think of that as you know, going away, it's, it's sad, it's saddening. Local radio is dying because they just pick up and rush Limbaugh, you know, 12 to three and, and coast to coast, 1 a.m. to 5 a.m. It's all uh, national or international uh, broadcasting. The local guys are gone. To learn more about WFCS Radio, visit www.wfcsradio1077.com.